Ditch Out and Do a Podcast, episode number 35. Surprising Alex, even though he just told me to start the podcast. But, before getting anything, I want to say thank you to the Reasons I'm Broke podcast and Spoon Sandwich, becoming patrons. If you want to come patron, link's in the description. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later, but thank you to Daniel for signing up to be part of the Andy tier. And Jared signing up to be the Egg tier. Yeah. And want to give them a huge thank you, but... Later on, we'll go over our Patreon. I'll go over all the tiers quickly and give you guys the benefits, but thank you to them. So, Andy, how have you been? I uh, you know. Better weeks have happened. Those weeks happen sometimes, man. Yeah. I had a pretty rough week on the stock market. Oof. Yeah. I, uh, I have retired from gambling until football season starts back up. You know, I might dabble this year. In a little bit yeah, of that. And I may or may not lost like $500 gambling the past couple weeks. But Wait. besides that, I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, the stock market, I love it. And I've been encouraging people. And by the way, if you're looking to get in the stock market uh, and you want any kind of advice from somebody who's been doing it for a while, for years, and might be able to give you a couple like tips on where to start, you know, please send me a DM on Twitter. But, um, this week was pretty rough, man. Like I, I lost 20 bucks on the stock market and I know that doesn't sound like much compared to your 500, but, uh, when I, so I, so today I I made 15 of the 20 back, but, um, When I say like earlier this week, I was pretty much inconsolable. That's pretty much the case. Other than I lost, that, I lost all that money. I was like, I think it's time we uh, take off the mitts and uh, wait till football season starts back up because uh, baseball is not fun to bet on. I feel like you're good at betting on baseball. I don't, and you're good at, at gambling in general. Right. Yeah. I don't want to take anything away from that. So please don't take it that way. But when it Not comes me, to decent, when it comes to foot right. when it comes to football, you know your stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like your knowledge level on football is greater than yeah. it is in baseball and even basketball. And that's saying a lot because you know a lot about those sports, even hockey. But football, man, I remember last last year we were doing and we'll have to do it again this year. We were doing the picks. Yeah. In NFL, and it was really tough to beat you week to week. Like it was a real challenge for me week to week. I have to beat you two consecutive years where I per- picked a perfect week. Yeah, that's really hard to do. When you yeah. really think about it, it's very hard to do that. The odds are certainly not in your favor. It's a, a one in sixteen. So you know, but other than the stock market, my week's been pretty good. So stressful. No. Oh, dang. It's a, it's a, a new thing. Normally, it's a stressful well, week. <laughs> I took some time <laughs> off of work. Oh, that, that, that adds up. <laughs> Man, I tell people this all the time. Like, people always say money doesn't buy happiness. It doesn't. But it would solve a lot of my problems, right? I was and making I, a... What? I was making a joke at work. I was like, you know, they say, more money, more problems. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no problems. You know, I get, the, I love the idea behind that, but the thing is, like, as I've gotten older, I've realized there's a lot of issues that come up where you're like, if I just had a couple hundred dollars to throw at this issue, it'd probably fix it. So, like, I hate the people that say money doesn't buy happiness, but it sure does help. It does help, but the things that you have to do to get the money, a full time job. Get your knees bro- bruised can, up a little bit. It can, yeah, it can really <laughs> <laughs> out back, out back of Walmart. You're only getting a dollar. You're only getting nickel every time you do it. But you know, you it's it's about quantity, not quality. I don't know. I mean, yeah. like, but seriously, like <laughs> it, the things that you have to do, um, and put yourself through in terms of stress, like it's it's pretty crazy. Like me and Ashley, my wife, if you're new to the show or whatever, but yeah, we took some time off this week and it's been great. She even tells me that I, I'm kind of like a different person when I don't have to deal with the stress from work 
And I, I feel like a lot of Americans are that way. Like it, yeah. it kind of makes me wonder, like, does the UK have the right idea where in the UK the salaries are pretty comparable, but a full work week is 32 hours, not 40. And there are some yeah. studies, obviously some of them are biased that say the workers are generally happier and more productive and things of that nature. I don't Between know. Between the last podcast and this one, I yes. worked seven days. <sighs> Jesus. So, um, my brain's completely fried. I can't do that anymore, man. I couldn't I do it at my like, age. This past week is all just ran together. Like, <laughs> there was, like, so many times I'd be telling someone something about, and they're like, yeah, I was there. I was like, I don't know, man. Like, all these days, it's the same. I've been here way too long. It screws with your head, man. Like, when I was, when I was 21, I was working at GameStop, and I was covering two stores. So, I was working at both stores as someone like they used to call it a key holder, basically somebody who could open or close the store. Yeah. And I was working at two stores seven days a week between the two of them in the hopes of getting a promotion. And I did get that promotion, but after I got that promotion, the store manager left. So they didn't have a key holder. So I was the only person that could open or close that store. And I was just hanging out at the store like seven days a week for like almost a month. Yeah. That stuff messes with you, dude. You don't have a life. The days all started running together. Like the fifth or sixth day, I thought to myself, how long could I get away with with an air mattress upstairs? I, I mean, like, it, it's a I, thought that I occurred did, to me. In the seven days, I didn't do that much work either. <laughs> Most of the time, I have this manager. I, uh, and I just talk to her a lot. Yeah, and then she low key roasted me. She's like, she's like, because I'm quitting in like 50 days. She's like, when you quit, who's just gonna follow me around not do anything? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Like, it kind of feeds into my point from earlier. When you work somebody seven days in a row, or way over 40 hours, or a combination of the both, the productivity is not very good. Like, you get. Yep people that are really burnt out and they're not doing their job at maximum efficiency. It's yeah, kind of weird how that works. I told works. my GM that I was like, listen, I'm not mad. You know, I'll put this upon myself because I changed my availability to like, I messed up my availability to where I was forced to work these seven days in a row. Um, mm. To like fix my new availability. But I was like, I, you know, I got seven concession shifts. So I was selling popcorn for seven days straight. I was like, listen, give me like an usher shift. Let me clean popcorn. Let me sell tickets. Something. So next yeah. week I just have like an easy, easy week. And then after that, uh, we have Spider Man. So it's gonna be fun. Pew, pew, pew. You think that's gonna be big or? Oh yeah, massive. I feel like it will be right. I mean, it's the first. Yeah. It's the first. Oh, movie we're also getting after uh, Avengers. That's Marvel. I lied. Oopsies. Correction. We are getting the Avengers re-release this Friday. I figured you would. Um, which that'll probably, I don't know. I, I literally asked my GM, I was like, do you expect to be busy? And he's like, he's like, I honestly could not tell you this has never happened before. It is kind of unprecedented. I can't think of a movie that got he's like, put back he in said, theaters that quick. He's like, I've worked here since 2000. He's worked in the business since 2004 and it hasn't happened the entire time he's worked. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't really recall anything similar like that from my memory and i don't even work in the movie theater industry no. so you guys definitely be the experts happy I, uh late birthday by the way oh i appreciate that say it on the show can i can i just point out that and i have to go back but i remember there was a previous podcast where i was like oh i'm gonna make sure everybody wishes you a happy birthday and I, I got a lot of our listeners to tweet you and wish you happy birthday. And you're like, <laughs> I wish people wouldn't do that because I'll never tell him happy birthday. I don't like telling other people happy birthday, but you did it for me. So I love you, Andy. Thanks. I appreciate I it. I think I was the only one, though. Uh, prop. Well, you know, I had some people DM me. Oh. So um, I, I was making a joke out of it, too. 
I was like, nah. I know I told him I wasn't going to do it. So yeah. I kind of like do a little jab in there too. I figured, yeah. And I, I mean, I don't mind the, the jab because it made me laugh. Like it, it really definitely, uh, <laughs> I mean, it meant something. So I appreciate it. Like it really did. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Bengal, um, Jared, uh, Daniel, uh, Scott from Lazy Gaming Guys, Julian from Lazy Gaming Guys. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. My Uncle Bill. And Uncle Bill, if you're out there listening, I love you. But, um, yeah, I, I appreciate everybody that reached out. Um, a lot of people just sent DMs, though. So. And this is another reminder. Don't wish me happy birthday. I, I, won't, I no. won't wish you back. Everybody wish Andy happy birthday <laughs> every year. I will make sure to remind you guys we have to. It's important. It's important. Yeah. I have a reminder. It's on my calendar in my phone. There's <laughs> there's two people. There's two people from YouTube. Like this shows you how much uh I like Can I, I guess how, the other one? I I feel like it's a layup. I I I I guess not then. I was gonna guess Mally. And by the way, when I say two people from YouTube, I don't mean Julian or Scott or Jock because I knew them I was before guess YouTube. Lima, but if, if these, no, it's not, it's, it's, it's not Lima, it's Bengal. Yeah, I I literally have a thing that's in my phone like that comes up every year. Like, wish Bengal a happy birthday because I know he hates it. He seems to not. <laughs> I'm he, the same seems way. To, he seems to not like it, and I just love I love to tweet him happy birthday. Cause then, uh, then all these other people are like, "Happy birthday! When are you doing a Browns rebuild?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "I already did fourteen this year." <laughs> the Browns are this. actually good now. I could stop rebuilding them. Do the Browns rebuild, Bengal? <laughs> <laughs> make them terrible, <laughs> then make them good again. <laughs> yeah. What happens if you trade away Baker Mayfield and rebuild the Browns? <laughs> okay, so we're trading Odell Beckham Jr. away. For Cecil Shorts, <laughs> just like really bad trades, and then you Baker just Mayfield to... for Sidney Rice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this year we're just gonna go for a stopgap solution at quarterback. <laughs> we're just gonna sign Blaine Gabbert, and we're gonna see how he does. So yeah, like uh, I, I don't really don't like I don't know, man. Like I didn't really become great friends with many content creators. I would say you, Bengal Double R. I don't know Double R's birthday, so I don't have the, a calendar reminder for that. Um, also, before we move on to our next topic here, I do want to give uh, a plug for them, uh, the Two and a Half Cents podcast. You're listening to this on a Sunday. Uh, they released their newest episode on Saturday. I was on that, and they were very nice in plugging this show, so I would be remiss if I did not plug theirs. Uh, go to YouTube.com and just type in Rain Ravens. And uh, if you're if you're following me on Twitter, you'll see me uh, post about it on Saturday. But had a lot of fun recording a podcast with them. Um, they certainly uh, they they wing it. They wing it on their podcast. They don't really have topics. I feel like we put we put some time into. Uh, I mean, not this week. Yeah, not this week. Which is kind <laughs> of which is kind of in a weird way uh, funny because. You know, I'm sitting here talking about, but like, I always try to think about like, can I bring three or four topics to the table this week? It just hasn't happened. So we're kind of winging it today. I feel like, I don't know, we have a a good chemistry where like, I don't know, we could just go like, I'm, well, the topics help, but like we can go with no topics, I feel like, because we'll just like talk about dumb stuff. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. We've been I, talking like 14 minutes now or something like that. Yeah. Without, a single topic yeah you see here's the thing i feel like this podcast has two like if it was a pie chart it has like three main components right one of them's dcd film club right and that's like a third and then the other two it's like topics and the other one i would just call it buffoonery where we just talk about yeah. stupid stuff so um yeah this one's gonna be a little bit heavy on the buffoonery uh, also, uh, next topic here. I'm just going to quickly glance over that. We asked for listener questions. No listener questions. <laughs> Literally no one responded. WTF. Like, come on, guys. Give us something. <laughs> Get it together. Like, not even a like, a retweet. No, a response. dude. Just, just Literally com- nothing. Yeah, just ghost town, dude. Like, jeez. It's like our listeners... I thought about retweeting it today, and I was like, nah. nah. They put this upon themselves. Nah. Nah. 
you know what? I'm so angry. I might not even answer listener questions for like a week or two. That's how oh, really I'm, get them. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna teach them a lesson. I'm just kidding, but yeah, no listener <laughs> we'll tell, questions. We'll say the listener question, but we won't answer it. Yeah. <laughs> Next we'll, week. we'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not gonna answer it. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, if you do have a listener question in the future, you can always tweet us. And then we also do have a phone number uh, that is posted that uh, on our Twitter that I don't have in front of me at the moment. But you can always call us and leave us a voicemail as well. Um, that'd be pretty cool. You'd actually be, by the way, if you're someone who leaves us a voicemail for a listener question, <laughs> no lie, you would be the first person to do it other than... The person that called uh, <laughs> called us asking about our car's warranty and if it was expiring and if we wanted to open up a new warranty through a third party company, they called us 802, twice. 802 DCD. Yeah, there you go. I was trying to look it up. Andy beat me to it, but yeah, you can always uh, call us there, leave us a voicemail, and we will certainly uh, answer your question we'll even play the voicemail in the episode i'll do some editing magic not really so anyway moving on to entertainment andy i wanted to talk about oh wait we're not moving on to entertainment i wanted to ask you what have you been watching what have you been playing this week oh it's been like 15 minutes we haven't got to this yeah uh i've been playing nhl oh wild i know i know crazy out of left field i did not play any mario odyssey because i know I, I told you my brain was fried earlier yeah i just Played in NHL. It's like a game. I don't know, put my feet up. I play online, and I'm pretty good at it. Like, I'm on a nine-game win streak right now. But when I'm playing, I just put my feet up, and I'm chilling, watching videos. Like, today, I was watching a lot of stand-up comedy. And then, watching, I watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, uh, one of my favorites of mine, mm-hmm. and probably a future DCD Film Club movie. Uh, I watched the new Child's Play movie. And I watched the film club movie. If you want my review for any of those, check out letterbox.com. Oh, yeah, letterbox.com. Yeah, we have a link for both of our letterboxed profiles. And uh, you, what is it? Do you follow people on there? Or do you yeah, like, send them you a follow? Friend? It's like yeah, Twitter. if you follow us on that, we will certainly, well, I'll certainly follow you back uh, to get some of your takes on movies. But it's a really fun app. Like, I've been trying to keep up with it because. It's kind of fun to like because I can go yeah. in there and look at everything that I've watched and see what I rated it. And it's kind of cool from a perspective of like, hey, maybe I want to rewatch that or like, hey, yeah. this is a movie that I kind of want to read. And if you don't know what you want to watch, you can check my watch list of twenty nine hundred films. Yeah, yours. I'm I'm trying to <laughs> catch, I'm trying to catch up to you, but uh like what i've found myself doing is a lot of times i'll watch something and forget to put it in there or yeah um, i don't know it's just like it's a habit now i've been yeah. doing it on imdb for so long i just you know i just do it on imdb and throw it in the letterbox i really like it i i feel like right now i'm at the point where everything i've watched in the last six months to a year it's on there and yeah. i went through and i i hope i didn't miss any but I went through every single DCD film club, and I made sure I have a, that's uh, on there. A list on there for anyone. You can check oh. my profile, and there's a list of every single DCD film club. I didn't know you could set that up. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah, check out Letterboxd. Uh, we're not sponsored by them at all, but it's a really cool yeah, app, code, and I've been enjoying. Use code DCD for ten percent off your free account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 if you use promo code DCD, it actually changes it from free to four ninety nine. Like they make you pay. <laughs> I mean, there is paid versions. I pay for the pro version. Yeah. Which uh, the only reason I pay for it is because I go to my watch list and search by service. So you can be like, "What's on um, Netflix?" I didn't and know you that can was only a thing. Pay for it. That's really cool. Um, so like I go to my watch list and I'm like Netflix it has like everything. Netflix, Hulu, whatever you want. You'd be like, I'm gonna watch something on Netflix tonight. Click on it, whatever. It takes you and it shows you everything that you have on your watch list that's on Netflix. But I the only that. bad thing about it is you can't click on a movie. If you click on a movie, it won't tell you what it's on. Yeah. Which is weird, but it'll if it's on your watch list, you can search by the service and tell um, you what's on there. Which kinda sucks. Yeah, they should fix that. I feel like it wouldn't be too hard to fix that. Yeah. But uh I don't know. 
Uh, do you have any questions about the new Child's Play movie? Because I have a lot of top opinions on it. Uh, so I will only ask you one question, but I want to hear everything you have to. Everything that's not a spoiler, I want to. I want to hear what you have to say about it. If I liked the original and even the later iterations that got really hokey, but to me they were just fun. Would I like the new one? No, I think it's awful. Ooh, that's not good. I think it's god awful. If it would be a better movie if it wasn't a Chucky movie. It's so wildly different. Ooh, I don't like that. Like it's a basically the, the premise is like Chucky's like a uh, Alexa. And he controls, like, your house and stuff. Like, he controls the TV, he controls the temperature. Uh, He's like an Alexa. But he also walks around like a person. Hmm. And it's, like, a, it's called a... But it's also not called a good boy doll or good... Or whatever it's called. Um, it's called a buddy. And also, it's made by a LeBron's production company, which makes me sad it's their first movie. And they're supposed to make a Friday the 13th movie. And it kind of got me bummed out because it's probably going to be bad as well. Um... It doesn't show any horror. It just, like, it it shows it and it cuts away when it happens and cuts back. And I don't know. It's r- really awful. The CGI is off. The original Child's Play from 1990, whatever, has better. Chucky looks better in that than this movie. I feel like that kind of goes back to a discussion we were having last week about sometimes CGI isn't the way to go. Like yeah, sometimes practical using, effects is always better. Sometimes using practical effects, even though it doesn't, I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to say, even though it doesn't look as realistic, sometimes it feels more organic. Yeah. It's the best way I could describe it. I mean, like uh, the thing is completely practical effects and it still looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, even I, I mentioned it last week, alien over yeah, chest burster. It just, it just turned 40 this past yeah. month. I think in April it was 40 years old officially. Uh, you know, it still looks pretty good for some, like when you've uh, really uh, taken into consideration that it's 40 years old, it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know. Also, practical effects age better than CGI. I think so too. So, because like, like, I don't know, when we watch Dread, I still, I couldn't tell you if that was good CGI back then. It the wasn't. CGI looked terrible to me. It wasn't. They should have limited it more. And I mean, like, it, it, if there's one criticism to that film that I can wholeheartedly agree with the critics on, it's the CGI in that film. I will also say, like, some movies that I really love, like Spider Man, Spider Man Two, even yeah. Spider Man Three. The CG by today's standards is best film movie of all time. Spider Man Three. Nah, pal. I can't agree with that. <laughs> Best Venom movie, that's what I said. No, like, I can't. Like, I actually really liked the new Venom. I think it had some shortcomings. I don't, I don't think that... Listen, yeah, it had shortcomings. But here's the thing, like, there's not a lot of depth to the Venom character. Like, let's just my, be real. My uh, current cup at work is Venom. I go by, as you see my Captain Marvel cup in the back, I go by using the cup that no one else uses... <laughs> So I have like a Bumblebee one, a Venom one, an Aquaman one, and a Captain Mar- Captain Marvel. It's like no one else uses those, so I use them. Well, at least you know it's your cup. Also, I, uh, I traded a Shazam one for the Venom one because <laughs> people are using Shazam too much. Yeah. And someone stole my Venom cup. Sorry to hear it. Yeah. It's terrible. So this week I've been watching, well, I finished watching... The U.S. version of The Office finished that taken up Netflix. for the second time. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that I did watch it a second time because I will not be buying NBC streaming service. I'm really sorry, NBC, but I'm already subscribed to two minutes. You have until 2021 to rewatch it again. Oh, OK. So then there's going to be time. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'll rewatch it again. I just got it. I just kind of got sucked back into it, and I really liked it. Yeah. And it was actually a little bit funnier the second time around. I noticed a lot of things that I missed the first time, but um, really good, really good. And 
I just wish there were less streaming services. I I feel yeah. like there's too many because right now, like I'm I'm subscribed to Netflix, Hulu, WWE Network, and um, I just canceled CBS All Access, so I had yeah. four. But now there's gonna be an NBC one. There's gonna be a Disney one. Do you, and do you count stolen passwords as having? dude i'm about to start doing it like if you don't i have youtube premium that's it i'm about to start like finding someone that wants to split a netflix subscription finding someone who wants to and i am that guy by the way who will go in pro tip from your buddy purple swordfish here by the way um especially with hulu and wwe network Go in there, act like you want to cancel your membership, and oftentimes they'll be like, "We'll give you a free month if you stay with us," and then you just get a free month. Like it yeah. gets really expensive because like WWE Network's ten bucks, Hulu's twelve, right? Then they tax it's like thirteen eighty one or something. Netflix, I don't even know what it's at right now. I think it's like thirteen and some change as well. I don't pay for it. Yeah, well. For me, I'm paying thirty six dollars a month for streaming services. Then I have my Direct TV bill because I have NFL Sunday tickets. So it's just getting out of control, man. I have to buy league passes here for NBA, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just i I feel like for the longest time, people kept telling other people, and I still hear it today. Oh, just stream everything. Just like cut the cable, man. Don't don't get cable. Don't get satellite TV. It doesn't just work if you, everything. if you enjoy sports. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work if you enjoy sports. But the other thing, too, is like if you get all those streaming services, it's still pretty expensive. Just yeah. saying. I don't know. You still have to pay for an internet bill. Yeah. And then as far as what I've been playing this week, um, I did watch a couple movies. I uh, watched Mrs. Doubtfire, by the way, on uh, Blu-ray. It was great. I bought it recently, but just never went and uh, actually watched it. But it was really good. Uh, finished the original X Men trilogy, X One, X Two, X Three, um, or X Men Last Stand instead of X Three. But um, finished those and reaffirmed what I've always felt: the first one was the best, the second one was pretty darn good. It was close, and the third one. I hated it because they killed yeah. my favorite X Men, Cyclops. They gotta finish the whole thing, the whole franchise. I am, I am. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna watch the next three. Uh, they have a Blu-ray combo pack that just went on sale for about twenty to thirty bucks. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that uh, on four K, and then have I you will. Seen Logan? Yep. Uh, I need to go back and rewatch it. It's a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. I totally agree with you 100%. So I, I have that. I own it, um, a digital copy of it. So I'm going to watch the the three, and then I'm going to watch uh, The Wolverine, and then I'm going to It's the one. watch Logan after that. And then yeah, it's I'll the do one Dark superhero Phoenix. movie. I'm like, that's a good movie. It might be a contender for like the best treatment of a superhero movie. You know, like it's it's got to be up there. It's in that I, top 5. I, I have this take I, I I I the best superhero movies the top 4 in my opinion are the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, Logan and The Dark Knight. And one thing that makes them stand out from others is they're not superhero movies. Logan is a western movie that happens to have superheroes. Guardians of the Galaxy is a comedy movie that happens to have superheroes. Like, I feel like the, uh, that's what makes, like, superhero as just, like, a genre itself doesn't work. No, you're right. I mean, I feel like... like the Dark Knight's a crime movie. I don't want to talk about Dark Knight. be about Batman. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about Dark Knight Rises because, like, I don't like that movie. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I didn't like it. I thought, I thought Tom Hardy's performance as Bane was unbelievable. Hines and, Ward, was that movie? Yeah, I mean, I I feel like there are bright spots to the movie. I hate the storyline. I hate Batman's arc in that movie. 
I feel like it made Batman look weak. And to me, Batman should never look weak. But um, that's just my opinion. But Tom Hardy as Bane really saved it. I feel like Batman Begins was the strongest of all three. And then, like, Heath Ledger's performance in Dark Knight was, like, just completely... Yeah like jumped off the page and I think made that movie what it was like I used to watch dark Knight, and I used to skip to the Joker parts like just cause yeah. those were the most That's entertaining in the, but it's Batman, of, Be- uh... Batman begins. If you haven't watched that Batman trilogy, like don't, I know dark Knight rises. I kind of like low key, um, took a big steamy dump on it, but like it's still worth watching at least once. Watch all Christopher Nolan movies dude it's it's tough man like i can't really think of a bad nolan movie but there is none that's why yeah like even like on tarantino has some stinkers but uh has a stinker we'll be getting back to tarantino fan we'll we'll we'll, we'll be getting back to nolan uh later on in the show but anyway um so yeah, I, that's yeah, that's what I've been uh, watching this week, and then uh, I've been, oh. and this will be a good segue into uh, my only topic for entertainment this week. I just wanted to mention that uh, the new World of Warcraft update, which is what I've been playing all week, is outstanding. And if you are someone who played World of Warcraft and you might be wanting to get back into it, the eight point two update or Rise of Ashara update is is outstanding um i've been playing it like i said all week and it's just been a ton of fun i mean it's great it's like a whole new expansion but it's an update so if you're paying that 14.99 subscriber fee i completely forgot my uh did you stream this this week it may have been last week i don't know i told you everything's running together I watched one of your streams on my switch so i couldn't be in chat (laughs) playing world of craft that's because my power was out I appreciate and my you Wi-Fi doing that. still works. Yeah. Why I don't have power? How? Uh, it's, it's battery backup line. maybe. Yeah. It's also yeah. We have a like a, a forty-eight hour battery something like that on our, cool. our router, and it works for a long time. So basically, every time my power goes out, it's happened twice. I instantly go to Netflix, download a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of movies I want to watch. Go YouTube, download a bunch of podcasts I want to watch. That's tight. Um, because I have YouTube Premium I and want Netflix that. So download stuff. Pretty cool. It may be because we live in the middle of nowhere. That's why. And if your power goes out, there's like you're screwed. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely a problem. Like we had a hurricane come through. We lost power for two days. Uh, you just you don't realize how much you appreciate power until it's gone. <laughs> it, yeah. It, last night our we our power flickered and our router freaked out and it was just going off the battery and the battery died so we didn't have power. We didn't have internet. I mean. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to my grandma's house. I'll drive a whole hour to. <laughs> I drove a whole hour to watch Seinfeld for 45 minutes and fall asleep, and then woke up and went home. I mean, gotta do what you gotta do, man. I I, I guess I lied earlier. I did watch some Seinfeld, but I've rewatched that so many times. I don't. It doesn't count. Yeah, that's like a back. That's a show I put on in the background. I feel like I've seen. I I feel like I've seen every episode of Seinfeld. Many of them multiple times. But I also feel like it's a show where if I went back and watched them sequentially, I'd be like, oh, I don't really remember that one that much. Oh, it's so good. But it's a great show. I mean, I feel like that one's a timeless show. Like, I love making references to it to one of my friends because like, we're all young, and so most people don't know the show. Yeah. So I'll be talking to him and be like, hey, I saw Joe DiMaggio at Dinky Donuts. <laughs> and everyone else is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's so good. Yo- and we'll be like, you know that Joe dunks his, he dunks his donuts? <laughs> it's such a great show, dude. <laughs> There's so many great references that people just, like, they yeah, just, it, they're, you, you just gloss over them because there's so many great things that happen within. Um, I, I forget how long that show was on the air. Maybe, like, what, eight or nine years? It wasn't on that nine. long. I, yeah. It was nine seasons. Yeah, and it's like within that nine seasons, there's so many things that you could reference. Um, kind of reminds I follow me of the like office. a Seinfeld Twitter, and they were like, they said everyone's been depressed recently. Why don't you just bring back Seinfeld? Because laughter is the best medicine. I will tell you, 
if they could get the original four to do one season, I feel like I don't think they could get Michael Richards. I don't because he said some things. Yeah, I know. But like, <laughs> I, uh, listen, we gotta forgive. Him, Have forget, you seen man. the uh, the teens react to the to Seinfeld? No, I don't really watch teens react, but it was like a big thing where they were like, "This show sucks," <laughs> and they were like, they were like talking about the episode where they have like the gay characters, where like Jerry's like, "I'm not gay, and that's okay." Yeah, and they were like saying that it was like, "Oh, the show's so like bigoted." Even oh. though that show won an award for being like progressive, I feel like it was pretty progressive. I think some of the humor you probably, you know what? I'm gonna, you know, I, I'll walk that back. I feel like it would be a disservice to try and censor the humor from that show because I don't they think were, anything is outright like there was talks of taking the show off Hulu because of. The teens react of it. That's silly. Yeah. I hate the Fine Brothers. I can't stand them. The, nothing nothing good comes from their drivel. Anyway. DC Film Club. DC Film <laughs> Club, yeah. Um. So we're reviewing The Eyes of My Mother from 2016. It was Andy's pick. Yee. It's a horror movie. It's all black a and white. Tragedy movie. It's a tragedy movie. That's what I'd call it. Okay. I don't know. Andy? Uh, Alexander on Twitter no, publicly showed his hatred for the movie. Um, so, I told you, I, I was like, it's not the best thing I've ever picked. But it kind of hit home with recent events of mine. The uh, the loneliness part. So, uh, um. Before we get into it, as far as the Twitter thing goes, when I finally saw the end, I, I softened a little bit to it. No, it's a slow, I want to say slow burn, but it definitely is. I don't know. It, it's not really like a big burn. It's like a slow, like it simmers. Ma- yeah. I don't know. It simmers. Um, But yeah, I picked the movie. I saw it the first time. It's not that very popular movie. I saw it the first time on. Uh, blame truth he streams movies every once in a while yeah mm-hmm. um i saw on there and i don't know it was just like a weird out there movie that i decided to pick i knowing that it wasn't the best thing knowing a lot of people want to like it but there's also reviews on like a letterbox of a guy I followed named hanky chan he gave it a five out of five i was like maybe someone out there will like really enjoy it um i actually gave it a worse review than the first time i watched it um but no, it's a weird story. It's about how what cr- how crazy things you do if you experience intense loneliness. Mm. And like she originally loses her mother, and her father's just like a brick wall of no emotion. But um, then she you know she keeps Charlie, the guy that kills her mother. She keeps him alive. Mm-hmm. Um. This is spoilers, by the way. Yeah. Um. Then her father passes away. Then she's just her and Charlie, a person that can't speak. And then eventually Charlie tries to run away and she has to kill him. And then she's like at one point crying. She's like, what am I, what am I going to do? I'm literally by myself. No one is around me. And then uh, she steals a little baby boy named Antonio. She keeps the mother alive. And that's the whole thing where the mother escapes and the cops come. But I don't know. It just shows like how extreme loneliness could affect the human. Uh, I don't know. It's, um, it's the actual product of the movie. I, don't know, I really liked it. I think it's filmed pretty well. It's kind of bland. Like the lobster. But the lobster, I think, was a better blandness. Like the lobster, lobster is meant to be bland. This one mm. was just kind of like bland. Uh, the black and white, I do think, if helps the movie, mm-hmm. then hurts it. I don't think this movie would work in color. Um, I think for budgetary reasons, because I'm pretty sure this had a really small budget, which you didn't need a big budget for if you watch the movie, obviously. 
Um, so yeah, what were your thoughts on the movie, Alex? Well, I'm kind of glad I let you go first because your explanation of loneliness and how it can result in someone acting like that's the true like horror of the movie is like really irrationally, right? I mean, but like that's a thing like that can happen. Yeah. That's not really something that I really gathered from watching it, but when you it's say it, was, uh, doesn't say. Never mind. Like when you when you explain it like that, it makes a lot of things make more sense to me. Uh, so where to begin? First, black and white. I like the choice aesthetically. I thought it was the right move. I agree with you. I think it added to the. Uh, it just it, it, it aesthetically it was a really good choice. I, I can't yeah. imagine this film being color and having yeah. the same emotional impact, if that makes sense. And the reason I say that is everything everybody in the movie that isn't a part of this the main character's family um has emotion but everybody in her family her mother her father yeah. and even her herself there's just no emotion it's so flat they're brick walls yeah they're just so flat emotionally like there's not really much to them and the best scene that i can give you like the the beginning the mother's just talking about like they cut the head off a cow like it's nothing you know like it just it's like another it's like another tuesday for them you know and then you know the father she says to as a child she tells her father that she loves him and he just doesn't even respond you know like yeah and then even she brings that uh young lady home with her from the bar and when she's yeah. talking about how her mother got murdered and she says that she killed her father, you know, she just does it in such a flat and monotone way. Uh, it was obviously a very deliberate choice. Like the main character is always talking very monotone, very yeah. flat. And I think the black and white enhanced that. So I think that was a great idea. I do like the cinematography on this movie. There were a lot of shots that were done from Mm -hmm. like a third person perspective. Like, for example, when Charlie tries to escape, you basically see it from the perspective uh, of a window, like an open window. uh, And you don't really get any sound right until the final moment. And then it actually switches over. So, like, I like those shots. I liked the opening shot of the movie and how it comes full circle and I thought it was a really powerful shot because like it was it was something it reminded me a lot of a movie called Let Me In, the US remake of it. Um, because it's originally a foreign film. But the opening scene of Let Me In has you going like, what the hell is going on here? Like it grasps you. And the opening scene of this film really had me feeling the same way. I'm like, what is going on? This is very like odd. Yeah. The oddity of it all goes throughout the whole film. Um, Sound wise, really well done. I mean, you hear every creak, every moan of that old house. You hear all the stuff going on in the background, old TV, old radio style stuff. I mean, it's just, it's really well done. Um, Really enhanced the experience. You really felt like you were there. Uh, You know, and I thought the acting was strong. I don't think that the acting was poorly done Mm -hmm. where I had issues was the story itself. A lot of it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, Andy's take on it kind of, it was illuminating for me, but I still wonder about motivation behind it all. Like, why like why she do why, things why, why, why would movie? why would she why was she so obsessed with was it that she got her first taste of bloodlust and then just couldn't stop i don't know i just think it was like 
or was it just it, numbness the, the numbness horror of to other people her mom dying in front of her was like if you're gonna leave me i'm gonna kill you hmm. like please don't leave me or i'll kill you that's fair I you know where I I think what what I really struggled with with this movie was the the gore, I you know yeah. I really have a hard time with that so, I think maybe I was a little bit too harsh, towards the movie because of that because I am a person that does get kind of squeamish when it comes to, blood and guts and all that. I so, mean I recommend one of the worst scenes in cinema history for that, with Gerald's game the the degloving scene so um that one was a pretty bad yeah. one uh remind me not to recommend uh would you rather then <laughs> so like a good example of like when it comes to horror i can watch something like human centipede right yeah. because human centipede the first one is really not that graphic there's no, not the second one. There's not that much. Well, then I watched the second one, which I knew was like a blood and gore fest. Like they mm-hmm. advertised it as that. And I remember in the second one, there were several times where I found myself. Like I caught myself looking away from the screen. Yeah. Like I couldn't bear to look at it. And this movie may there were many moments in this movie where I had to look away. I couldn't bear to look at it. So after it's all done, I still wonder why I still don't understand the main character's motivation. I can make guesses, but I just don't. My best guess is actually different from Andy's. Hmm. I think that when she pricked her hand, and saw the blood off of her finger and her mother's like, why would you do that? It's almost like this is somebody who I felt like it was like foreshadowing. Like, I feel like this was somebody who's a sociopath. Like they have no concept whatsoever. The only person she showed any care for whatsoever was, was the child that she abducted. And even then it's really twisted love. Right. I mean, every character in the movie besides child, and her dies. Yeah. And the mom. It's like really, she killed the Asian lady. Yeah. Killed the Asian lady. Um, she killed her father. Did she? She said, well, she says she did. See, that was the one thing that uh, like never really got answered for me because like the way they presented it in the movie was, I thought he just died of old yeah. age. And then, you know, she kept the body. So it didn't look like, you know, know, previous people she had murdered and chopped she up said and put it, in so. the freezer. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I, I just felt like there were a lot of loose ends and just never got tied up. So I, I did have some issues with the writing. But yeah. after I watched it, I sat down and I thought about it. And I know I went on my little Twitter rant and I just like <laughs> all over it. And I'll have to edit that, by the way, 5036. I'll have to write that down. But, I, I you know... All that being said that I said on Twitter, when I really thought about it after watching it, like my viewpoint softened a little bit because I thought to myself, Alex, what is a horror movie and what should a horror movie do? And I feel like like it's not always about making me scared or horrified or jumping out of my seat. Sometimes it can be a sense of like despair or... Uh, grief or yeah. uh, helplessness. And I felt like this movie was successful in that way. Like I hated what I watched. I hated every moment of it, but yeah, I should, movie, I should. Right. And that's the point. So I feel like it's remarkably successful from that standpoint. I wouldn't watch it again because it just made me sad and upset. Yeah. And like the happiest moment for me in the movie was when at the very end, you know, she gets a bullet, presumably, you know, to me, that's justice. But uh, like, I don't know, dude, like it stuck with me. Like it really stuck in my crawl. And that like, to me, 
it makes it successful. Yeah. So I kind of soften for, my viewpoint on it. For those, I'll say the tweet. For those that Here don't follow you on Twitter, uh, you ever watch a movie and you're just you just can't wait for it to be over? That's me right now. And then the reasons I'm broke podcast. Check them out. Said which movie? And you responded, "The Eyes of My Mother." It's the movie we're covering on the podcast, so I have to finish it. Otherwise, I would have turned this horse blank off. <laughs> so when I wrote that tweet, I was at the point where she was hacking the Asian lady up and putting her in Ziploc bags to put her mm-hmm. in a freezer. I don't know, dude, but it works. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things yeah. where, like, I at the time, I want to turn it off, but, you know, I mean... Uh, the, this is, uh, by the way, corrections from last episode. It's not a foreign film, by the way. It came out in the United States. Uh, I don't... I didn't... Whenever, looking back at the movie, I just remember the Portuguese parts. I didn't really think of yeah, the English parts. They kind of go, um, go in between... Yeah, it's from the United States. Languages. So, I got no. that one wrong. Um... But it is the directorial debut by Nicholas Pesk or whatever? I don't know how to say his last name. I have no clue. Um, but I know but that it is, is his first movie that he directed. And I thought he did a great doing, job. Uh, he's doing The Grudge in 2020. Well, good for him. I think that this, like, from a cinematography standpoint, I think it's really successful. I know yeah. I saw some negative reviews. Like, I, I do go and I check credit reviews after I watch it, after I formulate my own opinion. And I did see some people who felt like the cinematography was pretentious. I didn't really feel that. Like, I, I, I didn't think that they tried to get too artsy with it. Like, I kind of liked it. I felt like it had a unique feel. I can't yeah. think of another movie in the genre that was filmed this way. And I like it. It's, it's probably my favorite thing about this film. Yeah. So, would you give it out of 10? So Twitter ran aside. I feel like if you are a fan of horrors, thrillers, like that kind of movie, uh, something that will really be suspenseful and keep you on the edge of your seat and you can tolerate the copious amounts of blood and gore, I'm going to give it a six and a half out of ten and I'd recommend anybody watch it at least once. I originally... I first watched it, it gave a 6 out of 10, mm. and I altered that to a 5 out of 10. That's fair. That's fair. I, You know what? I would give it a 5 or even a 4 if it wasn't so brilliantly filmed. Yeah. There were so many good shots in this movie. And, and by the way, the sound design on this film is exceptional. I mean, it's done so well. Like, I, I felt like I was at my grandmother's house. Yeah, You know, the old TV has a distinctive sound and there's no bass to it. Like, it's just so well done. But like it. it, Yeah. Oh, that reminded me saying that Child's Play Mm. did something that really annoys me and that it does like staticky stuff. I'm trying to do this like least spoilery, but it's like staticky stuff. Like at one point you like see through Chucky's eyes and Mm. stuff. It is like staticky stuff. Static doesn't happen in 2019. That's not a thing. Not really. So it really bugs me. Like, that's not a thing anymore, and new stuff. Yeah, I can't really think of a scenario where that would happen. So, your movie for next week, you you hinted at being Christopher Nolan. So... I, I have... I, I, I know what it is. I don't think you do. But I really hope it's something else. But I'll say that after you say what it is. No, you know what? Let's let's have you guess. I want it to be Memento, my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Okay. But I think it's Inception. Or not Inception, Interstellar. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. I, I assume you're going with Interstellar because you know I like space and aliens and weird stuff like that. Is it like The Prestige? That. No, it's uh, what I have in the show notes here. Uh, Inspector Gadget 2. Inspector <laughs> <laughs> Gadget 2. Dang it. <laughs> the Star- best Nolan movie. <laughs> starring, starring French Stewart, who, I, <laughs> by the way, I love French Stewart. He's friggin' hilarious. 
but he's he's always got like his eyes like this and i'm always like i don't know if i could trust the guy who i can't make eye contact with that's kind of weird anyway but yeah french stewart's hilarious but inspector gadget 2 is one of the worst movies i've ever <laughs> seen in my life anyway um it is the prestige yeah and it is from uh is directed by christopher nolan and i have seen this movie before but i only saw it one time and i uh because i was watching it was played on tv like i missed a small portion yeah. of it so i'm looking forward to uh watching this one again and i hope people like it it's got a great cat i mean obviously christopher nolan it's got a great cast hugh jackman christian bale you know scarlett johansson michael kane like I, the list goes on it's it's a really good one um and i hope i you guys haven't like it. seen it but i know the twist well i hate that that's ruined for you because it's kind of what makes the movie yeah. but uh the two movies i was kind of hoping for though was a uh, memento or dunkirk yeah i really love those movies yeah i mean those are good too it's just i was thinking about what i try to do with dcd film club and i know that i haven't been uh very successful with this i know a lot of you guys have kind of <laughs> You've made your opinions known about how the <laughs> movies that I've picked. But um, I really feel like this is a... I, I feel like this would... If you guys don't agree with me on this one, I don't know what to say. I Like, I really feel like this is a <laughs> tremendous film. And it's one that uh, I've really enjoyed for a long time. And I want to know what Andy's laughing at. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> your rant last week about dumbest things you're like you gave fantastic planet this another role that <laughs> what <I know. laughs> it's so true though <laughs> i stand by what i said i love you sphinx you're awesome you're <laughs> probably one of the biggest if not the biggest uh <laughs> fan if you will or, or or supporter of the show but I I seriously don't get that <laughs> discrepancy. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. But I'm sure everybody else is out there going right. like, "Oh yeah, it's it's great." So yeah, prestige next week, um, and then uh, we will be doing a poll uh, on our Patreon for the next episode so, so jared and daniel get to argue over what movie it is well i yeah and then i guess um if we have to do a tiebreaker we'll let we'll let a random person pick i don't know what we'll do hopefully we get a third patron I mean, we can make the public pick maybe or we can pick daniel's and uh jared's selections and go to public on a poll i mean maybe we do that i don't know uh hopefully we just get more patrons between now yeah. and then but uh, yeah, we will be. I'll, I'll kind of get to that later as far as how that's going to work. Anyway, um, moving on to sports, I did want to get a uh, take from Andy on this because the Celtics have been making a lot of moves lately. Um, they've been interesting moves to me. I actually like the moves that they're making. I do have some questions as far as like who's going to play center. For the Celtics, you know, like, how are they going to fill Al Horford's absence? You know, things like that I have questions on. But I did want to ask Andy, how do you think the Celtics offseason is going in general? For, as, <laughs> I mean, you can't put Kyrie leaving against them because it's not their choice. Fair. So I give it like a, a, a probably like an A minus. Okay. So um, if they fill in the role at center which we'll get to okay so my first question we're, we're gonna assume that Kyrie Irving is he is, is guaranteed okay so we can he already all... told people that he's not resigning which I think is a mistake for Kyrie just throwing that out there I don't think other than going to the Lakers and being second or third banana yeah. to LeBron and uh he's going to Brooklyn with Katie <laughs> I put a hundred dollars on that. Fair bet. I really, I, you know, we'll go back to KD. So, um, Irvin leaving, you can't really do anything about it. Yeah. What do you, if they had to fill his absence with, uh, 
Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier. Okay. How would you feel about that? Trash. He's garbage. He's awful. <laughs> okay. I I don't hate many players in basketball, but Terry Rozier is the most overrated trash basketball player I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. So Kemba Walker, presumably Cardiac Kemba. Yeah. So I love it. Okay. He's Kyrie Irving. He's a shorter Kyrie Irving. He's not as good as a scorer. He's not as good as Kyrie. Really? But yeah, I think Kyrie's better than Kemba. But it's not like a huge gap. Okay. But he's Kyrie without the he's Kyrie without the off court issues. Okay. Cause I would actually disagree with you and I would say that Kemba Walker is an upgrade, but I mean, I mean, on court, he might be better because Brad Stevens has shown that Isaiah Thomas can lead the Celtics to an Eastern Conference Finals. And, and the only reason I say that, and I, I like, by the way, I love Kyrie Irving's on court skill. Yeah. I think off the court, I hate to use the word basket case, but that's really the first thing that comes to mind. I feel like he's all over the place. Let me, let me just yeah. put it that way. Kemba Walker is really really good and he's made some huge strides that i feel like kyrie irving made himself as a player not too long ago and i I feel like really it'd be one for one i feel like it'd be similar and here's the thing about walker he hasn't struggled with injuries like irving has yeah he also fills in the role for al horford too he's been in the league for eight years He's a veteran presence. Good he's veteran. A calming boss. presence. Yeah, and you know he's in, in. He's been part of some really bad teams in Charlotte, and he's been a part of he's some been part good of teams. Eight awful <laughs> seasons. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he's yeah. been uh, he's been there as yeah. a player that's done like on teams that have done well, teams that have been fringe playoff teams, yeah. etc. But he's never really had that locker room. Issue. I mean, he's he's gonna sign. This comes out on Sunday, I believe, when uh, free agency kicks off. Yeah. Um, but everybody's saying it that it's a done deal. He signed with Boston. So how do you Woj feel? Said it. Stephen A. Smith said it. How do you feel about the draft? The draft. Yeah. I mean, from it's really weird. I Romeo Langford pick. I honestly hate. Mm-hmm. And the last time I hated a pick was Terry Rozier, and he turned out to be garbage. Um, but I don't, it just doesn't make any sense to draft a guy at a position where we already have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But then at the other way, it's a really a three-person draft, and if you're outside the top three, like you're not really you're gonna get an above average. You're not gonna get like a all-star talent, like. I don't know. The, the Magic got a great talent in Okiki. Um, he fell in the draft because of his injury problems. Um, but, like, I don't know. It doesn't... F- he's going to be a backup. Like, they drafted a backup in the first round. And then they picked Grant Williams, which is low-key a pretty decent pick. He's going to fill in shoes for Marcus Morris. He'll probably be the starting power forward next year. He's a two-time SEC player of the year. He's He plays like a veteran out of college. And he's as an extreme... IQ like his mom literally works for NASA like it his basketball IQ is great he's a smart player and uh I don't know he's filling and then we have our second round picks Carson Edwards Mm -hmm. uh to refer back to Terry Rozier's statement overrated (laughs) but as a backup point guard Carson Edwards is I like him as a backup point guard I guess he's just a small score he's he'll be like Isaiah Thomas but if Isaiah Thomas coming off the bench behind Kemba uh, our guard size though is awful because Kemba, Carson Edwards, and Tremont Waters all are are literally it's Kemba and our two second round draft picks were super undersized, but they're all besides Kemba. Kemba has some defense. They're just scores. Okay. Um. And uh, Brad Stevens, I think, can get whatever he wants out of it. Uh, the bench is Loki g- garbage, and okay. there's a gaping hole at center. So how do you think that gets filled? Uh, there's only one man that I want that 
is a small contract big man that fits the team, fits what Al Horford brought to you besides the veteran presence. Well, he's a veteran, but like the the all-star potential veteran presence. That's Dwayne Dedman from the Atlanta Hawks. He's a stretch big. Um, other he, than that, the, he played uh, in Orlando for uh, at least two years. Yeah, he's, he's he's a good basketball player. He is really good. I like he was the third big on the Orlando roster, and when he would get playing time, he'd show you something. Yeah, he's and really then good. Um, he went. I forget where he went after Orlando. He went somewhere else before he ended up in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. And he actually yeah, started. For sure. I think it was San Antonio. If I'm, I, I could be wrong on that. But uh, wherever he went afterwards, I remember he was getting playing time, and he was really coming into his own. Like he was, he was starting. He, yeah. he gets better, and he has gotten better. That would be a, a really good pickup. I mean, Celtics. other than that, like there's Ennis Cantor or Kenneth Fareed, mm. like guys that I, I don't. I feel like Fareed is. St- I know he's played center, but I feel like he's just too undersized to play center. Yeah, they're and just like, oh, there's no good center Cantor's out there. Cantor's really risky because his okay. knees were shot coming into the league, yeah. and they're even more shot now. But outside of that, it's like Mike Muscala and Costa Kufus, like yeah. bench players. They're going to have to figure something um, out. But, I, I know. you know, it's going to be a, a small lineup. No matter what. I mean, there is still... We have Daniel Tice. We have Robin Williams. Robin Williams has a 12% block percentage while he's on the court. 12% of the shots taken while he's on the court is blocked by him. Well, um, maybe... He may fill in if he takes a big jump up. He's a, a short center. If I don't... If I... I think he's six foot ten. Yeah. But he has like a seven foot six wingspan. Yeah. Um, And then obviously we have the UCF legend Taco Fall on our summer league team. Well, you know, maybe somebody steps up. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes guys. And are I really you know. want Robin. I want Williams to stop. Rob Williams to stop. Robert Williams to step up. Because if he starts and Grant Williams starts, the the Williams last names are cool and all, but they have the best nickname that's already been given to him. Grant's mom's in NASA. The Robert Robert Williams nickname is Time Lord. Mm-hmm. So it's the space and time front court. I like that. Yeah. You never know, man. Sometimes a young player will come in and surprise you, like Nikola Vucevic. Really good example. Yeah. There's rumors that Celtics, in, but they, they definitely won't be able to get him if Kipma signs. That's true. But, I mean, like, Vucevic came from Philadelphia to Orlando, couldn't get on the court in Philly. Like, yeah. literally could not get any playing time. And had a little bit of buzz around him comes to Orlando and he was a really great rebounder right out of the box and a decent scorer lacks a yeah. post game, not a really good post scorer, but uh, you know, can really uh, shoot the long twos to a much lesser extent threes, but you know, like he really surprised the magic. So sometimes you can get that diamond in the rough Um that just hasn't been able to get on yeah. the court. But yeah, that's that's interesting. I just wanted to kind of pick your brain on the Celtics. And uh, I also, I think they're contenders in the East. I think everybody's a contender in the East right now. I I, I flip-flop every week, but I think Kawhi's going to the Clippers. You're probably... And then the East is... The Bucks will definitely win the East, uh, the standings-wise. But the Bucks have... Two years in a row failed in the playoffs. But I feel like they could be easily knocked off. Like, I, I, I even feel like the Raptors could be knocked off. They almost did get knocked off. Yeah. The Raptors had a harder time winning the East than they did winning the NBA. Apparently, finals. the Sixers have off court issues because everyone's all big headed there. And yeah. also, they're going to be a worse team next year because they're losing Jimmy Butler. And, uh, like, it's weird. They're going to pay Tobias Harris a lot of money to not get. Tobias Harris in LA was amazing. Like he was great, mm-hmm. but in Philly he was just like he wasn't. He doesn't like he doesn't give you the production that money. He's such he a one dimensional player. Like as a guy who watched him for three or four years in Orlando. Yeah. Okay. So first off, number one, Tobias Harris is an A plus human being. Okay. Like I want to be really clear when I say yeah. this. 
he's he's like the coolest dude, right? And I say that as a guy who came across him in the club, asked him for a fist bump, and he just shook his head at me and said, no, I'm not giving me a fist bump, right? <laughs> so that aside, like I said, Tobias Harris, A-plus human being. I have nothing against him personally, but his entire career, since he got that first contract in Orlando that had him getting over $20 million a year, his entire career has been defined by a guy who produces, but just not enough for that contract. Yeah. That's why he got traded from Orlando. That's why he got traded from LA. He's very one dimensional. He's a yeah. scorer and that's about it. He's an average defender at best. He's maybe a slightly above average passer his usage rate is really high. I, I'd have to look up his numbers from this year, but I remember in Orlando, he was like a black hole, which was yeah. fine because he could score, right? So it was like, it wasn't that bad, but um, I don't know, man. He's like one of those weird players. He reminds me so much just in terms of this. He's great at scoring, but not much else. He reminds me so much of Jalen Rose, where he was a player yeah. who just... He he could score. Jalen Rose, dude, could put up thirty if you gave him enough shots, but couldn't defend. Really wasn't a great teammate. You know, Tobias Harris, by the way, a great teammate. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that's going to shake out in Philly. Fun trivia. Yeah. Who led the league in use of percentage this year? Because you mentioned it. I would have to guess. Oh, it's probably somebody weird. I'm gonna Google it before. I'm gonna. I don't I'm gonna like say. A I'm buffoon at myself. I'm gonna say. Harden. It is. Uh, yeah, it's James Harden. Had to be. My information is wrong. I thought it was Joel Embiid, but I guess I was wrong. I looked it up. It was James Harden. Well, of starting caliber players, James Harden. M- yeah. Embiid would have to be up there, though. He'd have to be close. Yeah. But Harden, Harden's just off the charts. Like, so many. Yeah, I mean, he's at 36.1%. I, I can't, like, and just a little side note here, and Andy. Oh, I, that was playoffs, huh? Regular season. Mm-hmm. I think it's Joel Embiid then. Nope, still James Harden. James Harden at thirty nine percent, and then Joel Embiid second. So like, I have to wonder before we move on to our next topic, and I'd love to hear what you have to think about this. Like the the current rumor going around is that Houston's going to work out some kind of a deal to get Jimmy Butler in Houston, and the idea is that he's going to play alongside Chris Paul, yeah. James Harden. PJ Tucker. How? There's only one ball. Like, isn't Jimmy Butler dissatisfied in Philly because he doesn't? To quote PJ Tucker's statement from today, doesn't matter if we hate each other if we win championship. That's not, that doesn't work that way. (laughs) You're putting the cart before the horse. You can't, I don't know, dude. I also have major questions about how three guys that are clearly guards are going to ball dominant guards too. Yeah. I just don't see it happening, but Hey man, I've been wrong before. I talked to you a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The Houston Rockets will not be a relevant team with Chris Paul. You're probably right. Current current contract. You're probably right. Uh, But speaking of that, I have a question for you. I thought about this week. uh, I kind of just wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're paying a player big money like Chris Davis, CP3, Gordon Hayward, do you feel forced to play them Ooh, because that's you're a, giving them that money? That's a great question, and um, I think it depends on the sport to an extent. So, like, for example, football? <laughs> no. Yeah. Like. I mean, it's no guaranteed contract. Yeah, you just cut them, right? <laughs> and, like, that's kind of the beauty of being a bad GM in the NFL. Like a lot of times you can make up for bad contract sides. So in the NFL, you probably cut them, but 
here's the problem in the NBA and the MLB. A lot of times you're stuck with the guy unless you can mm-hmm. convince someone to trade him. So I'm of the thought you probably have to pay the you you, you probably have to play the guy. Yeah. You know, like Chris Davis is a really good example. Unless I have a prospect who he's holding back, right? So if I got a guy in double A who I know can be a DH or first baseman and I can either promote this guy like I should because he would make me more competitive or keep him down there just because I have the Chris Davis contract. Well, I'm sorry, Chris Davis, get on the bench and you can be a pinch hitter. I'm bringing my prospect up. But to my knowledge, the Orioles don't have anybody like a really hot prospect. Oh, their farm system's awful. Yeah. So if you're paying Chris Davis, you and by the way, that contract's untradeable. Like nobody's yeah. nobody's gonna touch that contract. So unfortunately you you play him. Um yeah. Chris Paul, another scenario where I think I believe the news reports and you'll have to tell me if you feel the same way on this, but I, I, my gut feeling is that they're true. I think that if someone called up Houston and offered junk, I mean, I'm talking about like a second round pick cash considerations, expiring contracts, just a, just a hodgepodge of junk for Chris Paul. They'd take it. You had to be the worst GM in the world to not take it for the Rockets side. So you're stuck with the guy. You might yeah. as well play him, right? James he's, Harden. He's still better than a league minimum player, I guess, right? <laughs> I mean, he's he's giving you above average performance, but at thirty, like seven million dollars a year, I think the, the, only is, going up. Isn't there like a year where he's going to make like forty? Mm-hmm. That's gonna be so weird. And then man. you have James Harden, who won, literally won MVP at point guard, and came in second this year uh, at shooting guard, obviously. But like, it's it's not like <laughs> you're lacking at the position. So, what would it take for you to bench Chris Paul? I think you just have to stick with him, right? And you have to hope that he works it out. Unless they drafted like John Morant. Yeah. I mean, like, I like. I just, I feel like you would hope that he settles into like a. You'd have to get like a top 20 point guard. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I feel like at this point in his career, Chris Paul is like a top barely like I'm talking about 14 out of 15, right? Top 15 point guard. He he's not the worst thing you can get. Like, I mean, it's it's above average, but you're paying him. You're you're paying basketball. Yeah. You're paying him top two money as far as position goes. Like, but that those contracts happen sometimes, dude. And like I, yeah. I, there's no team options on his contract. By the way, I looked that up the other day. Mm-hmm. So there's it's like it's I'm, fully guaranteed. So you're kind of married the best to the course guy. Course action is a trade James Harden, Ooh. a Herschel Walker style trade. No. Trade James Harden for the world. Here's the problem. Anthony Davis, I feel like, is an exception. When superstars hit the market, you generally don't get... Like, first off, you're not going to get another superstar for him, right? You're going to get a lot of prospects, and you're going to get a lot of picks. And we all know that when you do that, it's like buying scratch-off tickets, right? Like... You can buy ten one dollar scratch off tickets. I mean, you literally can't trade James Harden for a better player. James Harden is arguably a top four scorer all the time. Yeah, no, I like as the years go by, it becomes 
weirder and weirder that this guy wasn't a starter in Oklahoma City. You know, like, it it just as time goes by, it just blows my mind more and more that this guy was a bench guy. But anyway, um, I just feel like you'd be selling yourself short unless you could get an Anthony Davis-style haul. But, like, I look at trades like, here's a good example. 2003, the Orlando Magic have T-Mac. T-Mac at the time, in my opinion was the absolute best scorer in the league, period. And kind of like Harden, really good player on a team that had gone to the playoffs but just couldn't get over the hump. Had one really bad year. He wants out. They traded him to the Rockets, and they got back Steve Francis, Kelvin Cato, and one other piece that I can't even remember because it's not even notable. So, like, what if, like, what if it's a deal like that? Like, people here in Orlando were really hyped about Steve Francis. Then he came here and he kind of looked washed up, and that was kind of the end of that. Like, I don't know, man. If I'm trading Virginia James, Mobley's other guy. If I'm trade, there you go. Uh, if I'm trading. By the way, Mobley was a lot better than just a throw-in. But like, I I feel bad saying that because Coutinho Mobley had one really good year here in Orlando before. Like, I think he had a heart condition or something, um, and couldn't play anymore. I mean, at the same time though, you all got Dwight out of that hypothetically. Well, not really because they already had that pick. I mean, it tanked you to Dwight. No, they tanked with M- McGrady. Oh. I don't know. So it was 03. McGrady was on a team that I think won 20 games. He won the scoring title. Basically, people were showing up every night in Orlando to watch T Mac put up crazy points, but they weren't winning many games. Grant Hill was injured, <laughs> right? And um the 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 best player on that team other than T Mac was Jawan Howard who was kind of in the twilight of his career. So yeah, man, um, didn't really work out. I don't know. Like, I I just kind of wonder what kind of a haul they could get for James Harden. Maybe there is a really good one out there. I don't know. I'm looking at a lot of superstar trades and they're all kind of (laughs) sad. It's really bad, dude. Like when you have a superstar, you hold on to it. Like if I was Houston, I would hold on to James Harden. That would be the only untouchable thing on my roster. Like, I feel like it would be easier to go to James Harden, tell him, like, we're going to bottom out for a year, and then figure it out. I'd rather do that than trade him. But I don't know. Maybe James Harden would be like, screw that. Trade me. I don't know. But uh, let's call it a wrap. Episode. Yeah, so uh, episode 35, hard to believe we're actually here. Um, Real quick couple things so first we're on itunes um actually you know what there's a video version of the podcast there's an audio version of the podcast if you're listening to the other one and you want to figure out where you can either watch or listen to it uh go to deadchannelduo.com and it'll have a link to every destination that we're on there's a bunch of them so uh check that out you can follow us on twitter at dead channel duo t-shirts if you buy a t-shirt we get about uh like four to six bucks depending on what the price is they always have sales going on but if you want to support the show get a shirt um it helps us out and then uh speaking of supporting the show patreon so we launched it this week earlier we thanked daniel and jared for uh joining as part of the andy and egg tears uh I'll, i'll let you guys go check it out you go to patreon.com slash dcd podcast uh, you can find it there there will be a link in the show notes and the tier starts at a dollar a month uh, the biggest perks are basically at a dollar a month you get the show early on patreon so if you want to listen to it in advance you also get to vote on dcd film club when we do the patreon pick every third week and then it scales up from there uh, we got decals at the $5 tier. 
Um, and then the $10 tier, uh, and actually you eventually get a free t-shirt. So, uh, and then finally iTunes reviews, if you want to leave us a review on iTunes, please leave your name. We will give you a shout out on the show and I'd appreciate it. Andy, anything else you want to talk about? Like nope. we talked a lot about sports with, with Boston, so Red Sox bullpen's trash. Mm. Sorry to hear it, man. Marlins are pretty trash in general, still. So I feel your pain. I mean, you. The Red Sox and Mets blowing saves every game. Yeah, bullpens are historically bad this year. So I know the Nationals have had a really rough time as well, but it's. It's tough out there for the bullpen, guys. Anyway, that's going to do it for DC35. We'll see you for 36 next week. Thanks for watching and or listening. Das Vidanya.